tightened just very recently. What what do you think are the factors at, at play which have tightened the pool so much? Honestly, I think a lot of people have lost faith that if the Democrats win, they're actually going to do anything about, of the, th about the things they're most worried about, whether it's the repeal of Roe versus Wade or the economy or prosecuting Trump for fomenting a coup. Uh, you know, Biden and, and the rest of his administration spent two years running out the clock, um, you know, impeding our democracy, perhaps destroying our democracy in the process. Um, you know, they've acted as enablers. And I think that that's made people lose a lot of faith in the system uh, overall. You know, I do hope people turn out to vote anyway. Uh, I think it's very important, but I've witnessed this happening, uh, you know, slowly and painfully over the last two years. And and Sarah Kenter, I'll, I'll just stay on that with you for, for a moment. I mean, I, I've heard some commentators be quite damning of Joe Biden's time in office. You said that they've sort of, you know, haven't really been paying attention to the clock. That seems to be something that I've heard from a lot of other US commentators. And also a feeling that um, Biden's administration has not really championed the very serious issue of, of American democracy being at stake. Yes, uh, you know... <laughs> I have known for my pessimistic predictions, but never in my wildest dreams two years ago uh, did I think that this administration would attempt to memory hole a coup and that the uh, architects of that would not be indicted or even investigated in a meaningful way. And so, yes, um, you know, the Biden administration deserves uh, a lot of criticism. You know, it had a lot of obstacles in its way. You know, Trump came in and bulldozed, uh, you know, what was left of a lot of rotting institutions and it was important that immediately uh, the Biden administration take take steps to rein in uh, elite criminal impunity, you know, which is what they post on, and also just to preserve basic things, voting rights uh, in particular, and infrastructure things like the Postal Service. Um, they did not act to do that. They acted as if they had all the time in the world. At first, I thought they were just, you know, uh, focusing on the pandemic, and I understood that. But as time went on, uh, they showed no urgency. They acknowledge these threats so belatedly um, that they're entrenched and much more difficult to battle right now. Many of us observing from this side of the pond, when the, the, the terrible news about the, the Supreme Court overturning the, 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 the rules on abortion, many people thought that the abortion um, issue would galvanise and stimulate young people. And, but that hasn't quite happened. Why is that? I think it it has actually. I just don't know whether that will translate um, into voting. I live in Missouri. I live in a state where I have lost my bodily autonomy. My attorney general signed it away the day that the Supreme Court repealed Roe versus Wade. And what it created was a climate of fear. And for women, it means that you know there is activism, but it is pragmatic. It's aimed at helping women who need, uh, you know, gynecological support. So it often doesn't even have to do with abortion. Um, in my state, we used to keep uh, track of our menstrual cycles on a spreadsheet even before this happened. So there's an element of surveillance culture. And I think it's given people the impression that American women don't care, that we're not angry. Uh, every woman I know, including Republican women, are absolutely outraged, but they're also terrified and they're worried about becoming an object of scrutiny. One woman in my state uh, told her story. You know, she wanted to have her baby and had a complication and had to have uh, an abortion in another state and nearly lost her life. And now the attorney general is investigating her and he's running for senator. So it's a very frightening climate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to see one more thing about that, the Democrats have not responded uh, as if it is that frightening and that urgent and that immediate for, uh, for us. You know, the day I lost my bodily autonomy, I came home to a fundraising email from Nancy Pelosi that read to me like, like a hostage letter. It was like, yeah, give the Democrats five bucks and maybe you'll get your rights back. I mean, I'm just like, this is not the way to approach it. This is happening to us right now. Now, um, Sarah, Kenzie, I, I slightly dread asking you this question because you have been uh, you've been a bit of a sort of soothsayer and a bit of a sort of prophet on on predicting what's going to happen regarding Donald Trump. I'm just tell us, Sarah, what is your gut telling you? What's your waters telling you about what's going to happen with Donald Trump? 
Well, I think he'll probably run. He likes running for president. I don't think he likes being the president. But if he runs, uh, he knows because the DOJ has just said this. And this is not an actual law. This is just something the DOJ has invented. That if someone is running for office, then you cannot launch a criminal investigation against them, even if they've committed an enormous number of crimes, uh, you know, publicly and confess to them publicly. That's how Merrick Garland uh, has been treating Trump. So Trump is making a sensible decision uh, in running because he's able to protect his own uh, you know, impunity and his immunity uh, from prosecution. This is not the way it should be. The DOJ should just go ahead and prosecute him anyway. But again, um, they waited too long. So I think he'll do that. And what we're seeing uh, is the repercussion of January 6th not uh, being punished. I'm also worried that on Election Day, we're going to see a lot of mini January 6th, a lot of very violent disputes over um, the vote, because I agree with the other Sarah that this is going to be a very close um, case. And I think it's difficult to predict who's going to win. And I think that that ambiguity um, is going to be exploited in violent ways. Uh, by Republicans who will, um, you know, use any tactic until the other party finally uh, bows down in submission, whether they actually won or not. Uh, and finally, very quickly, Sarah uh, Kenzie, do you think um, the ho- the hoo ha at, at Twitter w- will will have any impact on on the midterms? Oh, yes, definitely, because it'll become more difficult to get accurate information about who won various races. Uh, You know, Musk is uh, taking away verification. So say you are, you know, the AP or CNN, there will now be like dozens of APs and CNNs, you know, all unverified. You don't know which one is real. Putting out different results, uh, we already had a problem with that. It's going to get much worse, uh, much more confusing. I don't know what else he's going to do, but the news media relies on Twitter uh, quite a bit, and local administrations and states uh, rely on that as well, and for things like the documentation of uh, Election Day violence or violence in the aftermath. It's also important for that. Um, I think they're trying to cover up what's happening. I think they're trying to make it harder for us to understand what's going on.